As an ANSYS partner since 1984, we are highly committed to helping you design, simulate, and succeed. This video will show how you can use the contact tool in ANSYS Mechanical to troubleshoot and validate your contact models. I'll first demonstrate on this simple model of an electronics housing assembly. Hide the top piece so you can see inside. Uh, and as you can see, this model is going to need several contact regions in order to hold it together and make sure it is performing appropriately in simulation. I've set up my contact regions, but it's often a good idea to make sure that these contact regions are correct and performing correctly before running the simulation. The best way to do that is to add a contact tool here. This allows you to generate some initial information about the contacts without running the simulation. I'll first take a look at this table of initial information. The gray contacts we can ignore. Uh, they're not used in the analysis. The white contacts uh, are most likely working fine. There's a lot of information that's available about them if you're interested, but what we really should pay attention to are these other colors. Um, start with the red contact. This is a monitor no separation contact that is initially open. Uh, and these contacts need to be closed, otherwise they're effectively ignored for the analysis. So this is not working correctly. I can use this table to quickly find that contact region uh, and then focus in on it. And I need to make sure the right faces are selected. Um, Maybe I have some incorrect settings, maybe the mesh is bad, um, maybe the pinball radius is too small, uh, things like that. But I know that I need to concentrate on this contact region in order to get it working correctly. The other one that's showing in a different color, this time yellow, is this frictionless contact that is initially open. Now, nonlinear contacts, which includes frictionless, frictional, and rough, can start open and become closed during the analysis. So this isn't necessarily a problem, but it does remind me that I can't depend on this contact region to hold the model together, uh, at least at the start of the analysis. Now we'll move on to a different model. This time a simple bolted flange with a gasket in between. And this analysis solved but some of the results don't look quite right. Uh, the first step where I apply the bolt pretension looks correct, but the second step where some external loads and internal pressures are applied uh, doesn't look correct. The internal gasket actually leaves the assembly. So if something is wrong here, and it's most likely due to the uh, contact settings I've set. So the best way to troubleshoot that is, again, the contact tool. This time I'm adding it under solution, so instead of the initial information, it'll get me the results uh, from whatever time points solved during the simulation. The status plot will be useful if I uh, animate how it changes over time. Uh, first I'll look at the end of the bolt pretension. So it looks like it's closed, and I can see that it's closed on both sides, as indicated by that orange color. but as time progresses in the second load step, as uh, loads are applied, I can see that that contacting area gets smaller and the not in contact area, which is the yellow, gets larger. So it seems reasonable to conclude that these contacts are eventually separating, and that's why it ends up exiting the assembly. So this might be a problem with my contact settings if I've set them up in an unrealistic way, or it might mean there's a problem with the design that I need to fix. Finally, I'll show a, a different version of this same model. Uh, this one solved correctly, I fixed the problem with it, and uh, so now I don't need to do troubleshooting, but I want results from my contacts. Um, so the, the contact tool isn't just for troubleshooting, it can be used for the results you need from your simulation. First, we'll take a look at this status plot and how it changes in that second load step. So you can see that the area that is open, not in contact, changes as these loads are applied. It actually moves. 
So that is uh, pretty important information, especially for gasket applications where the area and contact is uh, very important. Another thing you might be interested in is the pressure. What is the contacting pressure in the locations that are closed? Uh, as well as if there are gaps, how far away are they? Uh, how large is the gap? Uh, and there are even other results that you might be interested in, like uh, what's the contacting penetration? How far is the sliding distance? How large are the frictional stresses, etc. So this is just a handful of the things that you can use the contact tool for, but I hope this has been helpful in showing you how you can use it to uh, validate the setup of your contact models, as well as get useful results out of the simulation. Now, if you found this useful, I'd recommend you check out our other ANSYS content on this YouTube channel, as well as our website, drd.com. Thanks for watching. Contact us today to discuss your unique physics challenges and find the right ANSYS tools for you.